Hi everybody, Steve here. Welcome back to the Vinyl Record Mission. And welcome to our first ever Vinyl Community Comments Collective video. Yeah, that's a mouthful, isn't it? What is the Vinyl Community Comments Collective, you ask? Find out after the debonair decibels of DJ Joey K right on cue. <laughs> Your two favorite guys, Ryan and Steve, from the Vinyl Record Mission. Five videos, less than 30 days, nearly 80,000 views, and close to 900 comments later, I've decided to start a little series and call it the Vinyl Community Comments Collective. I'm not sure how often I'll be doing it. It just depends on the response that I get from, from videos. The video that spawned this entire like frenzy of views and comments and opinions and all kinds of stuff was about these. Yeah, records, sealed records, okay? Sealed. And you're probably going to... I'm sure you're going to bust my, you know what, when you find out that this is not one, not two, not three, not four, but five. Yeah. John Coltrane, Blue Train, Tone Poets. All sealed, yet to be opened. Why? Well, number one, because I can. And don't ever let anybody tell you you can't. When this record came out, I was so excited about it. I wanted to have four monos and four stereos. <laughs> Why? Yeah, maybe I thought it was going to, you know, take off. And, and I am a collector and I am a reseller, so if you want to... Bust my chops for that, feel free, go ahead, put it in the comments, and you just might make the Vinyl Community Comments Collective next video. So what happened is the last few videos I have done were related to ghosting, hazing, off-gassing, PVC inner sleeves, the long-term damages of, of sealed records, and uh, nowhere in those videos did I criticize anybody for having sealed records or enjoying uh, the collecting of sealed records. And nowhere in that video did I really explain why I had like 200 plus sealed records in my collection. But the comments were so great. I've got some amazing comments that actually stuck to the topic of off-gassing and the damaging effects of PVC inner sleeves and even PVC outer sleeves, we came to uh, realize. Some really, really educated answers came from people that worked in the industry, that have worked at pressing plants. Um, so there was just a plethora of variety in responses. But you know, the world is a funny place. There's all kinds of comedians out there and personalities of all types. And I will tell you this, out of all the comments, there were some that just made me laugh. And in, in not, you know, uh, in, in a humorous way, but not in a disrespectful way, like I was laughing at the person because they were, they were ridiculous. In some cases they were, but maybe they were being funny, I don't know. So I kind of pulled the top 20 comments from all those videos please if you're not in these top 20 don't feel like your comment was not greatly appreciated and or maybe even higher quality and better um, but some of you went into great detail and and I, and I couldn't share those types of comments but nevertheless you know it turned into a video about why are you collecting sealed records you know What's the matter with you? Records were made to be listened to, you know, and it's, uh, what's the other one? It's about the music. It's not about the money. So very opinionated people in the vinyl community. 
And that's okay. I'm, I'm, I've learned to have fun with it. And I can clearly tell the difference between a troll and someone who is just trying to express their passionate opinion about how they feel. And that's okay. That's why we're here. Everybody has an opinion. And you should be able to share your opinion. You should be able to buy sealed records if you want to and, and never listen to a record a day in your life and just collect them. Not even have a turntable. All of that is fine. It's all fair. You know, the government already tells us what to do with our money. Enough. We don't need total strangers telling us how to spend our hard-earned dollars. So do what you want. Have fun. But what I want to do is go through the top 20. And here they are, right here. I had to write them down because they're so good. So the first one kind of made me laugh. It's from uh, C underscore A underscore W. And he basically told me, get a life, mate. Go outside with three exclamation points. <laughs> well, I just responded back to him and said, uh, I do have a life and I do get outside. I'm outside of Ryan's storage unit full of, you know, 50,000 records every Monday. So, yeah, I have, if I didn't have a life, I certainly wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today with all these records and having fun and, you know, yeah. Anyways, I thought that was a, a funny comment. The next one was from, uh, looks like Tiboros Z1825. That's T-I-B-O-R-O-S-Z-1825. And he said, or she said, or they said, why is this even a question regarding a record? You are the last quality inspector. Keep it wrapped, and you might be preserving useless crap. Now that is a very, very intelligent comment. I really appreciate that because it makes a lot of sense. There's some guys that have just gone on to say, oh yeah, who cares what's happening inside? Just sell it to somebody who doesn't know and, and pass on the defect to another, you know, paying customer. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that guy, you know. But that was a very, very intelligent comment. I really appreciated that one. And this one comes from someone whose screen name is actually uh, in, Intelligencia or Inteligencia, if you want to say it in Spanish. I guess that means intelligent. Uh, and it's 101 after. So this person is really intelligent. And they told me, why don't you not just sell your sealed records, then buy unsealed records to replace the ones you sold? You would make money doing that, and you would know your records are in good shape. I thought that was, that's pretty smart too. Well, what a lot of these people don't know is that's what I do already. I don't keep all of the records that I have that are sealed. That's the reason that they're still sitting here because I, I haven't processed them. And those of you who watch the channel, you already know what we do. We buy bulk, massive, sometimes a thousand records, sometimes 30,000, sometimes 50,000. So when you get hundreds of sealed records in those collections, you don't just rush home and grab a knife and sit on the couch and open all of them and re-sleeve them. No, you decide what you're gonna keep and then you sell the rest. And you don't always do that right away. It's a long process to process a big collection of, uh, big collections of records. So that is a very, very intelligent answer and it does work. That's a very good way to process your sealed records. And that's to sell them off and then take that money and buy something that you know is in mint condition and properly sleeved and is already open uh, to you know, eliminate the risk of damage. Then I've got David Mander. This guy's comment was pretty on point. How to prevent disaster. Because one of my, the titles in one of my, uh, the videos that got like 42,000 views was how to prevent disaster. And he says, how to prevent disaster, dot, 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 Get it on CD instead. That was, that was clearly a dig. 
But hey, Dave, more power to you. I, I've got a CD player. You see that? Let's see, can I point at it? You see that right there? That is a five disc CD changer. I am pro CD as well, man, all the way. Sounds great. Yeah, love it. I just, I don't need a magnifying glass to read the liner notes on these right here. And the, the cheesecake covers are much, much better to look at, you know, on those big 13 by 13 things instead of those little boxes. So yeah, Dave, thank you for that. Then I've got a good guy here, buddy Dime Bag Dave. Yes, and his creativity stick is always in, in high production. And he said, Frank, that's Frank from 33, uh, channel 33 RPM, really lit a fire under you, huh brother? It's cool if you wanna open everything, just take a second to think and breathe before you start a frenzy. Like if you already had a good play copy and being sealed adds a hundred dollars. So that's nice. You know, Dimebag Dave has always been right there to, to kind of like guide me, give me real good advice. He's a very like a uh, spiritual type, you know, person. And yeah, man, he, he always gives me really sound advice. I, I love it, you know. He doesn't just give me his two cents worth, he gives me a dime bag worth. <laughs> but yeah, I really appreciated that comment too. Thanks, Dave. And then I've got this, who is, uh, what is this? Necromancer, NEC Romancer 234. And they said, you have little time left. Listen to them, enjoy them. What is the deal with holding up to them until you die? You are old. Go crazy. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> right. Uh, I've been called old in a lot fewer sentences, but I, I get it. I get it. The clock's ticking. I'm going to be 57 years old this year. I know my beard is all gray, but I don't think I look like I'm going to die soon. Knock on wood. And then we've got Phil Sharpless or Sharples right here. He said, I just can't understand why anyone would not open a record immediately after purchase. Thank God I live in the UK as LPs here have never been sealed. I, ah, that's new one to me. I, I hope that somebody from the UK can help me out with that. Is it true that in all the record stores in the UK that the, the records are opened? And and just you can just reach in and pull the vinyl out? There's no seal on those records? That was a new one to me, so I found that very, very interesting. Here's one from RatDog84. Open it, play it, enjoy it. Not going to fund your retirement. Remember Beanie Babies? Yeah, well... I am old enough to remember Beanie Babies, but I'm also wise enough to know that there is no Discogs or Pop Psych for Beanie Babies. So Rat Dog, let me, uh, and you're, you're right in one sense that there's probably very few people in the world that have ever, ever retired by selling their record collection. And to be real honest, when you become of retirement age, that's the time when I'm going to really want to sit down and listen to every single record in my collection, maybe one at a time, go through them alphabetically, but that's when I'll have the time to sit down and really listen and enjoy stuff. But, you know, now, probably not. And if I sold them when I retired, I don't know what I'd do. I'd probably kill myself. But yeah, you're right. It would take a lot of records to build the wealth that they say you need to have to retire, which is, I think, around $1.3 million now. They say that you need to retire and to have, you know, in, in the bank to live comfortably for the remainder of your life. So, yeah, in, in a lot of ways, you're right. Um, but, yeah, the comparison of Beanie Babies, just no bueno. And then we've got PRS Records who said, yes, please open them so mine will go up in value. <laughs> That's funny. 
That's funny. It's good that that was right after the retirement, um, the investment retirement uh, comment, because it doesn't really make them go up that much. But I have seen some things happen where records plummet. They plummet. And they do that when someone finds a stash. Like, let's say a, a 45 has been like super rare because there's only been like three or four of them in existence for the last 20 years. And then all of a sudden, someone comes across a storage unit where there's 5,000 copies or 1,000 copies of that same record that's been selling for up to $1,000 because they're so scarce. So that does happen. So he, he could be right. I, I don't think, you know, my 40,000 views is going to, you know, have an effect on, on the Dow Jones Industrial and the S&P 500. But then we've got Dave over at Safe and Sound Texas Audio Ex Excursion. His comment, very nice, very accurate. Nice video. Sealed is at one's own risk on true condition. Very true, Dave. Very true. And the more you know about sealed records, yeah, the better you are, the better off you are, because if you don't know, you're, you're taking a risk, and you should know those risks before you go into buying sealed records from people. Next, I've got DJ Stan Steele. He says, or she says, or they said, ha, keep it sealed. Um, no, it's about as funny as this generation buying vinyl cuz, C-O-Z, they think it's a new fad and not having a turntable is cool. Buying a car without no wheels. Yeah, I get it. But again, there are people that just like to collect no matter what. Then I've got uh, Matasky here. If you're accumulating a pile of sealed records, you might have a problem. Just saying. Yeah, just saying, I guess. I, me and uh, how many other people in the world have the same problem? I, I don't consider it a problem. I actually consider not having piles of sealed records in your house. Now that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. Maybe, you know, some people want other people's problems. And then I've got Pablo HRRG. And Pablo said, there are people that enjoy listening to music and there are people that enjoy collecting items. That is Shakespearean. I mean, so apropos, so on point. So true to life, Pablo, awesome. And then we've got, these are some of the longer ones. These ones were actually very well, very well put together. This guy says, so this is 45 oldies, 10 is his uh, handle. So for a collector's standpoint, unopened pieces are still worth a lot more than opened ones, even if the item in there had more degradation than when it was opened. So to be fair, if you want to prevent disaster, you just had to leave them unopened. The next buyer still does not know the condition of the record is in when it was sealed anyways. And if he keeps it sealed, he'll never know. It's a choice. Open them up to prevent the deterioration of the record and lose some value, or leave them in the wrap. If you are to preserve the record, just open them up so future generations can enjoy. Well said. Very well said, 45 oldies. I like that one. It's true, but you know, I, I myself, you, you have to realize that if you are going to sell stuff, you just put it in the comments. You know, that the seller has no idea of the condition of the record inside of the shrink. And so it's, it's basically buyer beware. And then here's one from uh, 
Balls Dalt. Uh, any record I buy is lucky to make it two hours at home before it's opened and getting dizzy. Because that means putting it on the turntable. Just spent $250 on an original pressing of 98 Soul Coughing, album from Japan that was still sealed. It lasted 90 seconds before it was in contact with the clean Seattle air, getting ready to make noise. Oops. Records are for listening, not putting on the wall or saving to flip. It's about the music, not the money. So I got a lot of those. A lot of people think that music is not about the money. I got news for you kids. I've said this before. Have you seen the price of concert tickets lately? Hmm, have you ever wondered why the Rolling Stones are still performing geriatric tours at 80 years old or 75 years old? You think they're doing that because they love it? Partially, but before that, it's about money. If it wasn't, they'd be doing it for free. Their records would be free. All records would be free if it wasn't about the money. But money is what drives the artist to perform money and fame. Not always, yes, there's gonna be a few exceptions to that rule where these people just do it for the higher glory of music and art, but not so much. It's about the money, just accept it. And then we've got a public service announcement from AA-QX8MD. And this is in regards to the Judas Priest Nostradamus, Nostradamus box sets, and he says that they are notorious for this hazing and off-gassing issue. He says his included, and it's beyond repair. Also, take a look at a picture disc. Many picture discs are sleeved in PVC. Yes, and that is true. So he's right about that. And then I've got RCD4466, who says, I'm amazed at how many people buy records and never listen to them. Why? Makes no sense. I assume they think every sealed record is a potential collectible and they wish to be a collectibles broker. Well, I, I mean, that's what antique stores are, aren't they? They're they collectibles brokers. I mean, everybody finds a way to make a living, so I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but you're not really a broker if you're collecting something. You're a broker when you actually take something and provide it to somebody else. So they would have to be selling their sealed records in order to be considered a broker. Anyways, I don't wanna go into Merriam-Webster's here. And then I've got Richard Singer. I haven't worked out a way of playing records without opening the shrink wrap. <laughs> so all of mine are opened. However, I understand people collecting sealed records. But if it's sealed, what's the problem with ghosting? Nobody will ever know. Very true points. Every single, every single one of those statements was a fact. Really great job, Richard. Love it. Lastly, this is the top comment. It was said the most with the least amount of words, seven words in all, and it was just almost made me fall out of my chair. Jamie Bishop 9512 said, don't open it, the music might escape. <laughs> Anyways, that was Jamie. Yeah, that was the perfect end to a video about keeping records sealed. And if you'd like, feel free to tell us your thoughts and your feelings on, on keeping sealed records. I mean, I've, I've heard them all, but I'm always looking for new ones. I can tell you this much. Some of the comments I... I outright had to just delete because they were just just
cruel and unusual and, you know, disrespectful. I, I didn't even want the other people to have to read them. And those people know who they are. But uh, a word of, you know, a recommendation to them, there are certain things that should remain sealed. And that is your mouth. If you don't have something nice to say, right? That's what our mothers taught us or our fathers taught us growing up. So if you don't have anything nice to say, just make like a sealed record and be quiet. Yep. Once again, thank you for joining us on the Vinyl Record Mission. And again, if you have anything to say, please do so in the comments. Keep it kind. Take care. Bye for now. If you haven't, make sure you hit like and subscribe to the Vinyl Record Mission so that way you don't miss out on any future content. More videos coming your way.